Hello, Golden Eagles and all the student athletes out there. I have another session of life after the game showing you that not every chapter is meant to be forever, but it's the beginning of a new one. So I have a guest today that we're honored to have, Professor Courtney Bergman, who's a lecturer here at the University of Minnesota Crookston. She teaches a bunch of marketing classes, personal selling classes. Um, she helped me personally when I was a student here at the University of Minnesota Crookston. But the topic that we're going to be covering today, and she'll be using her presentation and teaching you about, is resumes. Um, now you got to put all together, all your experiences, your athletic experiences, your volunteer, your job experience. You got to put it all together because you'll be entering the, the real world and applying for a lot of different jobs or graduate schools. So I'm going to let Courtney take over and she's going to do her presentation here. Perfect. Thank you, Colby. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to speak today a little bit about resume writing. It's one of those really important aspects of moving on to that next chapter in life and getting that um, next you know, step in that job that you want to. And it kind of comes down to two things. It is personal selling. And then also it kind of starts with that resume, putting your thoughts down on the paper of what you want your um, new employer or potential employer to know about you. Um, sometimes it can be an intimidating process and hard for students to really kind of figure out what do I put on my resume, um, what are, and can it, it can be kind of challenging. So I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint. Okay, and so resume writing, it's really the key to self-promotion. And so as we kind of move on, I'm going to share with you different types of formats, different types of resumes. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the wording to put in your resume, how to organize your resume so that it's detailed and it's purposeful and it makes sense for the reader um, and also for a computer too. There also there's different computerized and scannable types of resumes um, looking for keywords and things like that. Um, we want to create a written and category categorized list of kind of your educational experience, your work history, um, you know, volunteer experience, we can add on different things like that. So I know uh, many of our students at UMC and um, have done a lot of great volunteer work. So that's awesome thing. That's an awesome thing to put on your resume. Um, and then also just talking about your education and any other work experiences that you think are relevant, your internship. Um, and so we are going to, um, the introduction is the purpose of a resume is to really highlight your skills, your abilities, your experiences, because we want to gain employment in an area that we have desired to be in it. And so we want to take a look at um, identifying what position you're applying for and really kind of looking at your resume to look at the wording, look at how you kind of showcased your skills and abilities and your experience to make sure that you're ready and prepared for that job if a reader or that employer is looking at it. Maybe it's their HR department, maybe it's a manager, maybe it's a computer system. So really making sure that we have those, those keywords in there. Um, even though your resume will have a unique set of content and experience, the organization for most resumes kind of has, it follows a very similar um, and basic kind of guideline. And so I'll show you some examples. Some of them are very, are going to look really similar. Um, and I'll kind of talk to you a little bit about where you can kind of find some of these good templates that exist. Um, so by following along and kind of completing the template, there's a template at the end. You can kind of look and kind of look at some of them. Um, maybe we'll, Colby can figure out what a resource we can kind of add this out there so you guys can have access to this PowerPoint presentation as well. And so here's the main types of resumes. Um, there's chronological, functional, targeted, combination. Some of the new, um, new and newer types of resumes are infographic. Some of them are video. Sometimes you might get an employer um, that has you submit a resume and then wants you to follow up with a video and kind of introducing yourself. Um, that might be for maybe a more sales driven uh, type of um, atmosphere, but also just in this day and age too of uh, Zoom and having to do mm -hmm. video, more video. So being comfortable in front of that camera is also kind of an important thing, which you guys are probably doing a great job of right now. Um, and then scannable, that's one thing to mention um, because most of the time companies are having you upload your resume to you know, large databases. And those databases are looking at the resume and scanning for like keywords and your experience and, and things like that. So in your education. If I could interject. Um... Yeah. I, I think one thing that I've heard 
recently actually on social media and you can probably talk a little about it is is when we submit a resume should we submit it in word format or should we save it as a pdf like what do you think is better oh that's a really good question um i typically from what i've seen now i haven't applied myself for a job in a long time now which is a great thing um but i would probably just look at it does the um from what i've seen i think it's more a pdf mm. um but it will really depend on maybe the database and they'll have probably a re like a recommendation of what to submit it as i mean it's an easy thing to do it in word and convert it to a pdf is pretty simple um yeah hopefully mo you know just kind of like changing it but um i would just depends on if they're having you submit it what the what they're requiring you to do sometimes it might be in a word format sometimes it's a pdf i think either one is acceptable i don't know what have you seen in that there's like a i don't there I mean, one way or the other there's been a bunch of people that kind of say um pdf and word like it goes back and forth like you were saying just paying attention to in the in the job application what are they asking for sometimes they ask specifically for the word format or the pdf and then also one thing from my own personal experience that i've learned is if you're going to be like for example if you have that word document and you're going to be converting it to pdf make sure after you convert it and save it check it because sometimes the format doesn't line up like when you convert yeah. it to pdf like it starts it doesn't even look like the original document like everything's kind of all over you the place can lose that formatting mm -hmm. so if it starts out kind of um you're using word and you're using the template yeah you definitely want to make sure that you're you know double checking saving it save as pdf but then pulling it back up and you know or sending it in an email to a friend and to say okay does this come across the way it's supposed to does this look right so i think um, you know, that's one of the, th the things that for students when they're applying for jobs, I'm kind of glad you mentioned that because there's other things too. A lot of times students will get to that kind of their senior year, they're applying for lots of jobs, right? And um, one thing that you really want to make sure of is that for every individual company that you are sending them to, you should have a different specific cover letter. And maybe even double checking your resume to really make sure that your resume is resonating with the different types of jobs. Um, mm. We don't want to totally change our resume just to kind of shift and fit it to whatever it should be. We really should really be indicating, um, especially in that cover letter, if they're requesting a cover letter, that that should be specific to the company that you're hiring and not just kind of a general to whom it may concern. They want to see that more personalized that you're taking the time to apply for that company. So um, that's one thing, too, that I've seen a lot of students do of, of just kind of blanketing to 20 different companies, hoping something, you know, sticks and mm -hmm. you can still do that. But just making sure that you're that you're being thoughtful on your cover letter is important. So and, and I've seen that, like, again, going back into personal experience. I've had to change my resume, like you were saying, for different jobs. So if I'm applying, if when I apply to an event management position compared to a student athlete development position, which focuses on leadership and helping them develop, I'm not going to be putting the same, I guess you could say the cover letter, the points I make aren't going to be the same in different positions. Maybe I don't even talk about the event management part of a job that I had, but I really emphasize that I was part of the student athlete development program here at the university. So just making sure you make those little changes. Mm -hmm. And then another big thing, if you're sending the same cover letter to everybody, make sure at least your dear to or, you know, concerning to is not the to some other company, because if right. they say that you're crossed off the list, you're yeah. never going to get an interview, not even get taken a look at. So just make yeah. sure to double check, triple check, make sure yeah. all those small things are are kind of aligned. Yeah, and I've seen that as well, where it just kind of looks like, oh, well, this was, you know, sent to the wrong, the wrong company. So um, you have to remember that oftentimes companies are receiving, you know, during certain times of the year, receiving hundreds of resumes for one position. And so we really want to be careful and, you know, do our due diligence to make sure that you're applying for that job in the correct manner. Because sometimes all we get is that resume and that cover letter to just, you know, hopefully get, get us that interview. So it's really important. Um, I'm going to quick touch on like a few of the different types of resumes and then we will, um, and then I, we can, I'll 
touch on a few more things later on, but the chronological. So I'm going to just kind of go to an example here. Um, this over. And so this is an example where you kind of have your um, chronological of how things happen. So you've got your overall objective, making sure that your name and information is right at the top, um, you know, and stands out. Your objective, um, this one is to obtain a staff nurse position in a community hospital. So kind of put that in there. And then you're going to have your education starting by chronologically of what is the most um, recent, okay, and work backwards. Um, so starting with work experience, they're going to go with what is their most present um, position to going back farther. So um, for most students, you're going to probably start with your education, you know, high school degree, um, maybe the degrees that you're receiving here at UMC. Um, if you've also been to a two year college before you've come to UNC you can, or UMC, you can cover that. Um, and then any volunteer experience. Um, any awards that a student might have received, and then skills and kind of moving down. So that chronological, this is an example of what this might look like. I will mention here, um, too, for students that if you're kind of struggling like with the formatting, that Word has really great templates that you can utilize. Um, Canva is another uh, tool that students can utilize where there's a bunch of different types of resume. Um, templates that you can utilize. So I really recommend students just starting with a template. It really kind of helps you to fill in the information um, with, with that kind of solid standard template. No, none of them are wrong. Some are just more cleaner than others. So I think that's when I look at it, I want to say, okay, what's work experience? What's the volunteer experience? Because they're going to be pulling out um, some of that really great, you know, quick looking at it one page, what do I need to know? Um, moving into the functional type, this one is going to emphasize um, your skills rather than your work history. So um, this might be, use this format if you have like a limited direct experience in the trumpet field, uh, but maybe you have some really good personal skills that could relate to that. Um, Kobe, we had kind of talked in the past for student athletes, sometimes they don't, um, they've been dedicated to their craft for a long time. Um, and for those students, you might not necessarily have had the opportunity to do get work experience prior to applying for a job, but you have to remember all of those really great skills that student athletes are learning over, you know, a four year period of time and probably all throughout high school as well of balancing, you know, potentially 40 plus hours a week of practice schedules, travel time. Um, workout sessions, um, team meetings, things like that, where that is a full-time job in most cases for student athletes. Um, and so maybe if you were like, for example, if you were like the team captain, um, you could include that here and what that meant. Like maybe you were the liaison between, you know, um, the athletes or the team and the coaching staff or Maybe you want to put in there where you have a really great time management skills because you were able to manage, um, you know, 40 plus hours a week of, you know, travel, practice, things like that, and manage to balance all of your schoolwork and get a good GPA, right? So those are also some skills that you might be able to add in there. And I think that's important. And I'm glad you brought that up, Courtney, because the student athletes out there, the Golden Eagles, I, I understand that a lot of your time has been taken up by sports and you haven't been able to get those experiences. But it's important to understand, like Courtney said, you do have those skills. When you look back at your experiences, the time management, the leadership, the, the fact that you're goal oriented, working towards a particular goal, of winning a game or things like that, your adaptability, um, working under pressure. These are all skills that can apply to the actual workforce. You may not see it, but start to really think about that. Maybe write it down and you'll notice yeah. that you do have those skills. And another thing to tap in, because like Courtney was saying, the functional, this more so focuses on your skills. Well, look, look back at your coursework. You know, those, your coursework gives you the kind of the, um, the fine tuning or the particular skills. If you're applying for a certain thing like business, you took a bunch of business classes, sport management, you took event management, administration. So you have those skills and those coursework that you can really tap in to utilize. And you don't really have to worry 
um, about not having that experience because you do, it's just not directly related in that sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So I think there's some really great um, skill building that happens over the four years of, you know, being part of a team and managing, um, you know, travel schedules and school schedules and, you know, study groups and different things like that. That, that is, um, you're building those skills. And you mentioned a lot of the great qualities that come from that, Kobe. So this might be what it looks like where you can kind of, and let's say you were a SRM um, student, right? And you, um, you know, you're a student athlete. And so you have a lot of areas of expertise and you can kind of tailor that to whatever job you are applying for. Where here, um, it just broke it down. So maybe reception and customer service, maybe you can do schedule, you know, the topics here um, can range to whatever you feel really fits you. Like maybe you, um, when you were a um, team captain that, you know, there was an organizational or coordination um, aspect of that. And what did that do, right? What are the skills that you got from that? And so maybe you created some sort of workout schedule or plan for the team and what that looked like. So think, think in terms of these are my areas of expertise. If you're coming out of college and you don't necessarily have that work experience, I think that this is also a great way to showcase your skills. And then moving down, um, you could still do some work experience or you could do some awards and recognition. I also think for students, like if they came in on any sort of scholarship um, to include that, because that, that shows your skill level and your dedication and um, so there is abundance of things that we can also um, put on that resume that make you stand out. And I think especially if you're probably moving towards a position in that sports environment, most likely they're going to understand that and appreciate this kind of um, type of resume too. Um, next thing is targeted. I'm going to kind of forward to here. Um, actually, I'm going to go back one slide. Um, in this one, this one is adapt your resume to each industry and organization in which you are targeting employment. Um, this format highlights your capabilities in relation to that specific industry, organization, or job. So I kind of remember when I graduated from college too that there was kind of a few different areas that I would have enjoyed going into. I wasn't really sure. I think many of us are at that you know stage of where like, oh, I could see myself doing event planning, or I could see myself doing this, and so maybe. I think this is where when you kind of look at your resume, you take a targeted approach to, am I applying for this job? And does my resume signify my interest level and my experience on that? So it's more targeted. Um, again, you're still kind of including a lot of the same information. Um, you would include this format if you want the reader to focus um, you know, on your education and work experience that have helped you prepare for a specific type of job. Maybe you want to emphasize some past experience that is really relevant. Um, and so these are some of the things that you might look at. And here's an example of this resume. So again, looking at your career objective, here's some of your core qualifications that you might have that you really feel um, like maybe you're applying for a job that you were doing something that really relates to this. You're like, I've already been doing some of this. So really put some of those core qualifications at the top, some of those experience and skills, and then moving down with your employment and education. So this is just another method um, to, I do, I do still think a lot of um, recent graduates will probably put their education at the top. That's probably gonna be where your education is gonna go kind of under that career objective, but another format. Um, these are just kind of a combination of a combination of types. This is another really good looking resume. It's clean, um, you know, has your professional experience. It has your education and credentials. And so this is kind of a combination of the two. Um, the next one is an infographic. This one is really interesting um, and kind of a new, a new way. I'm going to show it to you so you can kind of see what it looks like. And you, now you can kind of see the infographic. Now, this might not be the only resume that you submit, but this might be like, here's my resume. And then here's kind of like a one page, look at my like highlight page, if you will, maybe, you know, your cover letter and then kind of the highlight page and then your more in-depth resume. 
um, it kind of shows your creative, like if you're going to be going in, into any sort of like creative type of job, like maybe within marketing or communications or, um, you know, like a graphic design type of position, this might be something that kind of can showcase what you have to offer. And so here you can kind of just see, here's your quick biography, your contact information. You could include a picture or not, and that's not required. You could put maybe some sort of, um, fun little thing like Sam Smith has here. And it's just really a quick one page highlights of what I've done. Okay. So in, even for a recent graduate, this might be something that, that looks, this probably isn't the best scannable document. So I would also recommend doing a um, regular resume too, if possible. But this is kind of one of the newer types of resumes that are out there. Here's just some more examples of what that might look like. Um, just some kind of cool uh, examples where this one kind of is in a, in a circle and kind of highlights their personal profile, some achievements, you know, education, their contact info, some hobbies and skills and languages. So I have seen some students submit this through my, I teach personal selling and I give feedback on resumes and I have seen some students do this and do some really kind of creative stuff to really make themselves stand out. So here's some different examples of what that might look like. Again, another place to you to find some good templates like this is probably Canva. Um, I know there's some others out there. I just can't think of at the moment. I'll have to add that to my uh, PowerPoint presentation, but there's some really good resources out there for this type of stuff. If you look up like infographics, like if you want to create an infographic, there's tons of websites out there. Um, some of them you have to pay for. Some of them are like some free tools where you get kind of a limited amount of the tools. Canva's like that. So, and then. The last one is a video resume. So now this is going to be very dependent on your industry. They might request this. This probably wouldn't be something that you would do in lieu of a regular resume. This would be an additional request um, of showcase us your personality and here's what we want you to talk about. Um, when you do create this, keep in mind um, that you really want to be professional um, find a good background that can kind of show don't have like um, something in the background that you don't want there. So just think about the lighting in the background and try to get rid of any additional noises um, that, you know, you don't want there that might distract from your, um, your resume. I recommend like kind of creating a script or get some ideas of what you want to say so that you're not um trying to just figure it out as you go so get at least prepare some sort of jotted points of what you want to cover not so that you're reading and it seems very scripted but that you've got some bullet points of things that you want to discuss and they might give those to you of like here's the things we want you to discuss and so then you can jot those points down i have seen a few students be asked to do this um, when applying for sales positions so that could be a, a place i don't know I actually... if you had I've done three of them actually. So it's, okay. it's, it's kind of common I've yeah. seen. And, and the cool thing, so you don't go in blind, it, uh, go in there blind. Um, sometimes like they'll ask you to do it on the spot. So I've done a video resume, then have had to do a video uh, interview. But the video resume yep. part, like they'll give you like three, four chances to, to answer it before you submit it. So you will have a limited amount of opportunities so like Courtney mm -hmm. was saying, it, it'll probably be best for you to kind of have a script. Obviously, sometimes they don't tell you the questions. Uh, yep. two, out, two out of the three, I didn't have the questions. The, the one of them I did, but the two, you don't have the questions. But a lot of them are the same. Um, right. if, if you just focus on like, what are your strengths? Kind of think back on your experiences that maybe relate to the job. Uh, think about who you are. That'll give you a good head start when you head into it. You don't want to you don't want to screw it up you know, within the three or four opportunities that you only have. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times it's probably pretty brief, like 30 to mm -hmm. 90 seconds is what you're going to have. So it's not going to be this really long period of time. They just kind of want to be able to sometimes think of how, like, see how you think on your toes and how you're going to answer it in a short amount of time under pressure, I guess, if you will, is kind of mm -hmm. how you probably feel. And so those are some, some different things. Um, I think that this is starting to become a little bit bigger and bigger there's some industries who are still not doing it um it's not always just the first step because of 
um, you know, fear of like discrimination, you know, um, laws and things like that in the hiring process. But this might be maybe once you've passed the first level or the first round of interviews, you might go to the second round. And then now this is what it might look like before you get to that um, interview. So just something to be prepared for and know that might happen. Um, here's an example. I won't play the example, but, um, you know, there is an example that we can include in the PowerPoint for anybody that wants to um, go in there. So this is the last point, the last slide that I'll mention. And I want students to think about um, as you're applying that most of the time, not most of the time, but quite a bit of the time that resumes are being uploaded to a database and that database is looking for keywords. And so that's why I want you to think about, okay, what does that job description say? And do I have some of those relevant words in my resume? Right. So they're they're pulling out keywords. Like for example, I'm gonna say marketing because I'm from marketing, but you know, do they have a marketing degree? Is that on there? And I'm pulling that out. Um, what are some of the um, you know, maybe are they Google, Google Analytics certified? Am I looking for specific words that make people rise to the top? Um, and so I, I did kind of want to mention use strong keywords when you are writing your resume. Um I and and think of the tone of the resume instead of always writing like I did this, you know, um, thinking about some of the other words that you're using. And that's one of the things that I fix when I do look at resumes for students is helping them with the tone of the resume of like, here's the position. These are the things I did and not just and using the right tone is sometimes um, not always right. Always making sure everything is spelled correctly. I find a lot of spelling errors. Um, one of the great tools, obviously Word can do some spell check, but also look at Grammarly. Grammarly for students is um, free. Uh, there is like different tiers, um, but that's a great tool plugin that you can add on to Google Chrome that will not only um, help you with grammar on your resume or any papers then you submit, your emails, when you start emailing back and forth with um, potential employers, you really want to make sure you're using proper grammar and spelling and things like that. So um, those are some of the other things that I want to mention. Is there anything else, Colby, that I should mention or? Um, I mean, looking at all the, the resumes, the different formats, I think the common thing that you look at when you when you see people describing the task of a particular job or volunteer experience is the use of action verbs. They use action mm -hmm. verbs as far as, um, you know, uh, I can't even think some of like goal oriented, yeah. um, coachable, I'm self motivated, like using strong words and, and the verbs of like, this is what I've done, um, I think is really important. So just helping to kind of, and we have a great resource on campus. Obviously, I, I teach a course that's mainly or business students, even though everybody could take it, which is career development. We have a great resource on our campus um, in the career services area. I'm not sure who does it right now, but where we've got people on this campus that will help you with resume building. You can come to me. I'm sure, you could go to your professors in your specific areas, um, and they would be happy to kind of look over one more chance before you send that out um, your resume and help you just kind of like find tune some of the things. I, I feel like when students do their resumes and they're struggling to put things down, they forget all the really great things that they do mm -hmm. and what they balance and you know what you've taken away from specific courses or internship experience. Um, summer jobs uh, are great, you know, tools that you're you're continuing to learn and develop fresh professional skills when you do those. So um, don't be hesitant to ask one of the great people around UMC to add, you know to double check your resume and give you good advice because we have great people that would be willing to do that. Well, thank you, Courtney, for for doing this presentation and sharing all this information. And for all the Golden Eagles and student athletes out there, like Courtney said, take advantage of the you know the resources you have on your campus here at UMC or whatever campus you're on. Your advisors, your professors, Google, YouTube, these things all have these information. Like you don't have to create a new format. You can go visit Canva, Microsoft Word. You can download some sort of format. But I think the emphasis on all of it is this resume is important. 
and, and the fact that you may be intimidated by the fact you're going into the real world, you just have to think about those experiences. Think about everything you've done, because there are a lot of things that you've been able to accomplish and do and the skills you've been able to build while you've been in college, while you've been a student athlete. So don't worry about that. But again, this is just the first step. The resume is just one part of you getting that next job of you transitioning into the next world. We will have another um, session that we're talking about personal branding and, and how you can just tie everything in together. But this was the life after the game. I hope you found value of that you can reach out to me personally and everyone that's been a part of this and we will definitely help you out. But this was life after the game. And until next time, see y'all later.